Now, this morning, I had said to Jennifer, um, you know, the Lord God has not given us a spirit of fear, and the Lord has put Psalm 61 in my spirit all morning long, Psalm 61. And I want to declare in decree, uh, I have a beautiful decree. And uh, the Lord said, have everyone decree and declare Psalm 61, because that is what he is promising for you and your family and your household. So he told me to take Psalm 61 and turn it into a decree. Decree a thing and it shall be established for you. So I am going to take this Psalm 61 decree right now, okay? And I'm going to screen share it and we're going to decree it together, all right? Why is it so important that uh, we decree Psalm 61? Because Jesus did. Jesus spoke Psalm 61 over himself when he embarked on his ministry. And my friends, we're coming into a new time, the time of the kingdom. If you are in Christ Jesus, you, you're in ministry. Whether you have a business, whether you're just raising your children, and you know, and you you have a ministry. We all have a ministry. Okay. And we we must speak over ourselves right now. Isaiah 61. Okay, because if you have the Holy Spirit, right? If you have the Holy Spirit, uh, <laughs> you have Isaiah 61, you and your household. And it's a decree. And we must decree and declare it uh, powerfully. And if we don't, right? We may not have clarity of what our purpose is for the Lord. Click on that link so you can decree it with me, everybody. All right. And save that link. Save that link. Save this because you're going to need it. Okay. All right. You're going to need it. And I do have this decree also in my book. Thank full speed. Your High Horsepower Manual to Success. And I also have it in my book, Prayers and Decrees, Victory Prayers and Decrees, Volume 1. So the Isaiah 61 decree is in my book, Faith at Full Speed, and it's also in my Faith at Full Speed, or my, sorry, my Faith and Victory, uh, Prayers and Decrees, the Isaiah 61. And you're going to decree this over yourself and over your family. All right? I also have it on my site, and I'm going to load that up for you. Just hang on a second. There we go. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, Father God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, it is written in your word in Isaiah 61. We decree a thing, and it shall be established for us according to your word, and we are decreeing your word in Isaiah 61 over ourselves, over our lives, over our households, over our ministries, over our businesses, over our children and our children's children. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to the bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptance acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified and they shall build the old wastes they shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. That is those who you speak into. Those who you speak into shall be builders, shall have beauty for their ashes, right? You speak this over yourself, so it shall be for you. You speak it over your children, so it shall be for you. You see, we are a prophetic people. We're all meant to prophesy. 
And when we speak and when we prophesy, we don't prophesy gloom and doom. What does it say when the spirit of the Lord God is upon us? Come on. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings, good news. You see, if you have the Holy Spirit and the spirit of the Lord is upon you, you are to bring what? Good news, good news, good news. And you are to speak this over everyone. We don't, we don't speak gloom and doom. We speak blessing, encouragement. And the, to those that we speak over, what happens? They become builders of the Lord. <laughs> you speak this over yourself. You speak this over your children. You speak this over your hundred, husband. You speak this over your neighbors. You go and you speak over those who have, have been uh, through the hurricane and things like that. This is the word that God wants us to speak over the people right now. They are those who shall build the old waste and raise up the former desolations and shall prepare the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame, you shall have the double, the double portion. For your confusion, you shall rejoice in your portion. I am speaking this over you and myself right now as a minister of the Lord. This is who you are. This is what we must be speaking over everybody. Yes. Come on. Therefore, in their land and in your land, you shall possess the double portion. This is what we're coming into, my friends. Everlasting joy shall be unto them and unto you. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. We are in an even better covenant than better before through Christ Jesus. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles. What's your seed? Your children and your children's children. Your seed, and what else is your seed, right? Your, your blessings, your finances. Come on. And their offspring among the people, right? Our children. All that see them shall acknowledge them that they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. People will look at your children and say, wow, God has really blessed them. People will look at your grandchildren and say, wow, God has really blessed them. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. Do you realize you wear your salvation? You wear Jesus? You wear your salvation everywhere you go? It is your clothing. It is your garment. Your soul should only be what? Joyful. You should only bring good news. Come on. He hath covered me in a robe of righteousness. You come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. You are a sparkling, sparkling bride. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before the nations. This is a promise of God, and he's using us to do it. The kingdom of God is coming to earth through who? Us. So, Stop repeating gloom and doom right now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop sharing gloom and doom. Stop repeating gloom and doom. You want to be a true king and a priest of King Jesus? You want to step into the time of glory that is here? You are an Isaiah 61 representative of the kingdom of God. Everybody says, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost does not bring gloom and doom. It says right here in Isaiah 61, if you have the Holy Ghost and you have the Spirit of God upon you, you bring what? Good news. You bring hope. You bring encouragement. 
You bring freedom. You bring the word of God. You bring the promises of God. You speak redemption over people. You speak building over people. You speak blessing over people. You bring comfort over people. You carry the Holy Ghost. You bring beauty for people's ashes. You bring the oil of joy for mourning. You bring the garment of praise upon people. You are a tree of righteousness. Righteousness comes everywhere you put your feet. So stop with the gloom and doom. Stop repeating the gloom and doom. Is God bringing judgment? Yes, it says he's bringing judgment. But we're the builders. After God brings judgment on the wicked, that's happening right now, right? What are we meant to do? We're going to restore and build even better than before. And if we continue to speak good, we will have a double portion blessing on top of it. And people will look at our children and say, wow, they are blessed of the Lord. So get out of your gloom and doom. Get out of your fear. I want you to meditate on this scripture day and night, night and day. I want you to lay hands on people and decree it over them. I want you to decree it night and day, day and night. I said, Lord, give me a scripture. What do you want? What is on your heart? He said, we are coming into the kingdom age, Anna Marie. We are coming into the kingdom time. What is the first thing I did when I began my ministry to bring the kingdom? I said, you declared Isaiah 61 over yourself. He said, yes. I want everyone declaring Isaiah 61. They are glory carriers. They are carriers of the glory. They are carriers of the good news. You are a glory carrier. You are a carrier of the kingdom of God. This is a time of great and mighty miracles. This is a time of God's glory coming to the earth. You bring encouragement. You speak what? What do you speak? Good news. So this is your assignment. And I usually give the assignments at the end of the broadcast when I do prophetic updates, but the Lord wanted me to open with this today. We declared Isaiah 61 over ourselves, over our households, over our land, over our children, over our children's children, over our nation. This is who we are. We, The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. We, uh, he has anointed us to preach good tidings, to preach the good news, to encourage others, to build up the waste places, to build the kingdom and bring the glory, and this is what we are meant to do. And I love how it says this at the end here at the, of Isaiah 61. The new growth that is coming, right? The new beginnings in Christ Jesus. I just love it. But I love this part. And I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Come on, everybody, speak that out loud. You are speaking to your soul. You are speaking to your spirit. For he hath clothed me with garments of salvation. I wear my salvation. It is a robe on me. He hath covered me in the robe of righteousness. I walk in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Let me tell you something. Jesus is not coming for a beat up doormat bride. We are not doormats. We are door keepers. And you know, the Lord brought me to a video yesterday. I can't remember why I saw it. I can't remember if I saw it on TikTok. But it was a Jewish man, right? And a Jewish man. Uh, coming to see his bride, he had not. They had not seen each other in seven days. It was so beautiful. You see, when we look at King Jesus and his return, and his return, right? He returned one time on the Mount of Olives, and he's bringing what heaven with him. Just watch Jewish weddings, and you'll get it. You'll get it. So the Jewish man, the Jewish bridegroom, he hasn't seen his bride in seven days. And she's, she's sitting on this beautiful chair, her dress all flown out, beautiful, sparkling. I mean, she looks gorgeous. I mean, beautiful. All her bridesmaids all around her, her mother next to her, right? And here comes the groom. He hasn't seen her in seven days. And what is she doing? On her lap, she's got the scriptures open. She's adorned with the word of God. She's got the scriptures open and she's reading scriptures 
and her bridegroom comes walking in and he's got her father and his father. I got to share the video. He's got her father and his father beside him, holding on to him in his arms. His father, just like he is seated, King Jesus is seated on the right hand of Father God. So his father, right, is on this side of him at her father. Yes, it's so beautiful because her father and his father have made an agreement. They've made a covenant. So beautiful. And he walks in with his father, with his father and her father, and she's waiting for him. He hasn't seen her in seven days. She has all of her bridesmaids around her and her mother, and she's sparkling and beautiful. Her dress all flowed out. The scripture's on her lap, and she's reading her scriptures. And the whole entire wedding party is gathered around behind the groom. I mean, all around him and coming in to witness, witness that moment when the groom sees his bride. And he's got his whole, his groomsmen and all walking in behind him. And he lays his eyes on her and she looks up at him and he looks up at her. And they smile at each other. And it's so beautiful. And then he has this veil. Okay. And he places this veil over her. Okay. And it is absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is this was an Orthodox Jew uh, that did it. And I was like, Lord, we're close, aren't we, Jesus? We're so close. And your bride is being prepared. And when you see each other, oh, beautiful. And our focus is to be in the word, right? To be in the scriptures. That's our focus. And um, we must be a sparkling bride for him. When he returns after not, after being gone, right? I loved how prophetic that was. You see, seven days he didn't see his bride. Then on the eighth day, they get to lay eyes on each other. Jesus is the eighth day. His number is number eight. He is the bridegroom. As we're coming into the season of Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of the Trumpets, right? And, and the sound and the music and the trumpeting when the bridegroom enters to lay eyes on his bride, it's just absolutely beautiful. So we've got to look at these Hebrew bridal customs because it has everything to do with the return of King Jesus. And you see, he comes to her and she's seated and she's calm and she's peaceful and she's ready and she's sparkling and she's in the scriptures and she's lifting up her eyes to look at him. And that's what we are, you see. And it's just incredibly beautiful. And so this morning I said, Lord, and he said, Isaiah 61. And we're bringing the kingdom of God to the earth. Jesus has to get his wedding present, right? His dowry, the harvest of souls. We are gathering the wedding party. And uh, we are in covenant already with King Jesus. And there is a moment that's coming where he lays eyes on his bride. And we're going to be sparkling and beautiful and brave. Right? And I love that she was seated because it connects to her authority that's been given to the bride of Christ. Yes. So it was very, very symbolic, and I knew the Lord was speaking, and I want you all to be at rest, to be at peace, and focus on the scriptures right now, especially Isaiah 61. You are a glory carrier. You are a sparkling bride of Christ. Preparing the way of the bridegroom. You are not a damsel in distress that needs to get beamed out of here. No. You are preparing the way of your bridegroom here in the earth. Beautiful and glorious. Brave. And when Jesus returns after not seeing us, 
well, he sees us, but it's it's very um, symbolic. When he physically lays eyes on us. He's going to be amazed at how bold, brave, beautiful, sparkling, prepared we are. It's just incredible, you see. This is the truth. And stay away from fear doctrine. Be a bold, beautiful, brave bride. Hallelujah. So you've got your homework assignment. Stay in Isaiah 61. Continue to decree and declare it over yourself, over your household, over your family, over your ministry, over your business. Your business is your ministry. Your ministry is your business. Can you have business and ministry at the same time? Yes. We are a Melchizedek priesthood now with our high priest, King Jesus. So there's so many wonderful things that we need to understand about the kingdom and the kingdom of God coming to earth through us. And this is the greatest of times. Is there spiritual battles happening in the heavenlies? Yes. But we have all authority in the earth to trample on serpents and scorpions and take back the land for Jesus. That's what our job is. Hallelujah. So I'm going to uh, make sure. And um, I think that everyone has got this decree. And there's the link right there. And save it and speak it over yourself and your family every morning.